On the 31st of March 1911, 100,000 people gathered at the dock in Belfast, Ireland to watch the launch of the new Royal Mail ship Titanic, the result of an intense international rivalry between the United Kingdom and France over who could field the most luxurious and fastest cruise liner in the world. The Titanic well earned her name, and was at the time the largest and most luxurious cruise liner in the world, measuring over 882 feet from bow to stern and 175 feet high. The Titanic weighed in at over 46,000 tons. One year and one month later, the Titanic would be on her maiden voyage to New York, loaded full of passengers. On the night of April 14, 1912, four days out of Southampton, England, the Titanic struck an iceberg and proved that she was without a doubt not an unsinkable ship. Over 1,500 passengers and crew died, at the time the greatest ocean catastrophe in history. Fast forward seven decades and the famed oceanographer Robert Ballard is on a secret U.S. Navy mission in the North Atlantic. In 1982, Ballard had approached the U.S. Navy and asked for funding to develop his robotic submersible technology, which he hoped to use to discover the Titanic one day. The Navy agreed, but with the condition that once the technology was ready for use, he helped them locate the wrecks of two downed nuclear submarines, the USS Thresher and the USS Scorpion. Three years later and Ballard finds himself in the North Atlantic, using his submersibles to locate the wrecks of the Thresher and the Scorpion. He has plotted Titanic's course as well as the location of the rescue of its surviving passengers, and he realizes that the Titanic is likely located directly between the two downed subs. He asks Vice Admiral Ronald Thunman, the then Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Submarine Warfare, for permission to search for the Titanic en route from one sub to the next. But Thunman very sternly reminds Ballard that his mission is to locate the downed subs. The entire expedition is being secretly funded by the Navy, and Ballard is granted permission to search for the Titanic only after he locates the subs, and then only if time remains. Luckily for Ballard, he manages to locate and photograph the downed subs per the Navy's specifications, with just 12 days left on the mission. He uses the time to search for the Titanic, though nobody, least of all the Navy, believes he'll find it. To the shock of all involved, Ballard manages to do just that, and the legend of the Titanic is reborn for a new generation. Today, the Titanic is nothing more than a rusting hulk. It rests almost two and a half miles below the surface of the Atlantic, where no light can reach it. This fact and the incredible pressures at that depth, coupled with the very low temperatures, means that scientists believe the wreck would remain well preserved for many decades to come. After all, the ship now rests in one of the most inhospitable places on Earth, and the lack of life dramatically slows down corrosion. In 1991, scientists from Dalhousie University in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada, collected samples of what looked like icicles but are actually formations of rust called rusticles. Breaking a few off from the ship, the scientists brought them back to a lab and discovered that they were teeming with life an exciting discovery. However, it wasn't until 2010 that scientists led by Henrietta Mann at Dalhousie University took it upon themselves to actually identify what type of life it was. For years, NASA had been looking at the possibility of extreme forms of life, known as extremophiles, surviving in places like Titan and Europa in conditions that were once thought inhospitable to life. The discovery of bacteria living in hydrothermal vents deep under the ocean and even under the Arctic ice has led to scientists exploring what other environments bacteria could survive in, with the thinking being that if life can survive in extremely inhospitable places here on Earth, perhaps it can do the same in similar places across the solar system. The scientists re-examining the rusticles were able to isolate just one species of bacteria. And to their surprise, it turned out to be completely new to science. This new bacteria was termed Halomonas titanicae after the ship and has the ability to survive in crushing pressures and freezing cold salty water. A cousin of this bacteria is known to survive in salty marshes where the salinity can vary dramatically due to evaporation and has evolved the ability to produce special compounds that can prevent their cells from bursting or shrinking due to too much or too little salt. Incredibly, this deep sea cousin somehow survived the trip to the bottom of the ocean and put this adaptation to great use, propagating across the salty ocean bottom. Perhaps the most incredible of all their adaptations, though, is the bacteria's ability to actually eat iron, and to do so quite voraciously. In fact, the little buggers are such hungry eaters that scientists have now estimated that the entire shipwreck will be mostly consumed by the year 2030. Soon after that, all that will be left of the once mighty ship, dubbed unsinkable, will be a pile of rust and some non-edible furnishings from the interior. 
So if you planned on seeing the Titanic with your own eyes anytime soon, you may want to get yourself into a deep sea submersible and take a trip down now while you can, because as of today, you only have 10 and a half years left to catch a sight of this sunken wonder of the world. Do you love strange, unexpected stories that defy belief but are completely true? Then you'll love the new show I Am, fascinating tales told from the perspective of those who lived them. Find out what it was like to be a plague doctor during an outbreak of the Black Death, or the captain of the Titanic as it sank into the sea. Each episode, you'll jump inside the mind of a new person and get a first-person view on incredible events like no other. New episodes every week. Be one of the first to subscribe now and tell us who you want to see brought to life in I Am.